Today, you are listening to Think Again Christian, where pop culture and Christian traditions collide with biblical truth. Sponsored by Rainier Christian Schools. And now your host, pastor of Ravensdale Bible Church and superintendent of Rainier Christian Schools, Tony Jamie. Rethinking and re-examining concepts, ideas, traditions, and challenging your beliefs from American pop culture, your Christian denominational circles, how? By the renewing of your mind and through radio conversation. Well, today we're, we're going to talk a little bit about how, how there is power in media, how there's power in what we see, hear, and you know, watch, which is why we need to, to think again. We, we need to think about what we're putting into our minds and, and process that. And, and I want to be clear that before I get started, we're, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about, about Disney. And I'm not on a anti-Disney rant, and uh, that's not my purpose. And, and I don't think Disney set out to, to destroy families. In fact, quite opposite. That was his, his intention and his goal. And I remember as a, as a as a kid watching that Sunday night Disney movie night it was family night. And when you lined up the old Disney movies uh, with the others, I mean, these were family oriented type movies. And so I'm not attacking Disney per se. And really it's just a, an example of, of, of how we process and, and how we think through these, these stories. They were intended to be stories. They're intended to be fictional. Nobody's, Nobody's trying to tell us a, a lie and saying that, that the fiction is, is actually nonfiction. It is a fairy tale. In fact, uh, the big tip should be that it's a cartoon, um, that the animals are talking, right? This isn't real. Well, I wonder if Disney ever could have had imagined what kind of social impact that he would end up having on the world. I mean, I, knew, I know he wanted to have an entertaining impact, but what about the social impact? Walt went from this this little mouse named Mickey in his garage in Illinois to not only a a theme park dubbed the happiest place on earth, but this is a multi billion dollar multimedia conglomerate. It's a twenty five billion dollar multimedia conglomerate. Now, as a pastor, I could only dream that I would have just some kind of influence on on a on a small percentage scale as Disney has had, and that kind of influence on mankind for, for the good and really for the gospel. Well, one of the issues that's at the center of pastoral ministries is, is dealing with, with broken relationships, uh, marriage counseling. We, we, we call it marriage counseling. We usually don't say broken relationships because that's, that's negative. But in marriage counseling, we, we deal with struggling, struggling couples. And I can go from performing a wedding in the afternoon to counseling a a, strunkle, a, a couple on the brink of divorce uh, that evening. And there's nothing that breaks my heart more than seeing that. And there's nothing that really brings me greater joy than restoring couples who have kind of lost their way in, in relationships. Well, how do couples get so off track? I mean, what, why are there so many quote unquote mistakes. Why are so many fairy tales turning into nightmares? Well, about 10 years ago, when my twin daughters were around nine years old, one of their favorite movies was, was Disney's Bambi, Disney's Bambi. And, and in a great scene, the, the wise old owl explains to the, to the young skunk and, you know, Thumper the rabbit and, and Bambi, the, the star, the deer. And everybody seems to be falling in love. And, and, and so Bambi asks, you know, well, what's love all about? And, you know, in the string, everybody goes in the spring, everybody goes crazy because, you know, they're, they're Twitter pated. Remember that word Twitter pated. And so for 70 years now, Disney has been producing movies that explain their version of, of Twitter pated or their version of, of what love is. Well, what doesn't Disney tell us? Well, remember, you know, Cinderella, you know, she finds her prince at the ball. Snow White gets the, the kiss from Prince Charming. Beauty falls in love with the beast. 
um, mermaids, you know, they, they fall in love with humans and, you know, the lady meets the tramp and, you know, they have puppies and, and, you know, who can forget the aristocrat, aristocrat, I can barely even say it, aristocrats. And the list goes on and on. And what Disney doesn't tell us is what happens next. I mean, we see the love story. We see the, you know, the, the sweetness of how they get together, but, but heck, you know, um, it's not just Disney. It's, it's all motion picture studios. They just leave us there. Now, does Cinderella still have to go back and deal with her wicked stepsisters? You bet. That's family. You marry the family. Uh, does beauty, you know, get to live in that big giant castle all by herself? <laughs> no family, no friends. Maybe just the servants, I guess. Is it really, um, easy to hang out with, you know, seven dwarfs as your buddies, especially when one of them's name is Grumpy? Well, we, we don't usually get to that part, right? We don't get to the reality. And the problem with Disney cartoons and, and, and movies is that they all fall in love in about, you know, less than two hours and under this incredibly romantic, you know, circumstance. And, and they're usually, you know, beautiful behind, you know, beyond comprehension. Yes, even the skunk. And most of these characters, uh, you know, they don't seem to have any kind of, you know, financial heartaches or, or jobs. You know, they don't have to rake leaves or take out the trash. And, you know, what Disney doesn't tell us is that the crazy, emotional, twitter pated feeling goes away. Well, then what? Well, now, don't get me wrong, um, especially if my wife is listening. I mean, I, I still have passionate feelings for my wife and I'm still madly in love with her, but it's not quite the same. Remember when your pinkies first touched? What that felt like? That was amazing. Well, that's long gone, right? That Twitter patedness. And after 23 years of, of marriage and my wife still being the most beautiful woman in the world, and, and I can't wait to, to get home every day to see her, it's still not quite the same as that schoolboy Twitter pated feeling that we see with, with, with the youngsters running around. Well, what happened? Did our love vanish? Is, is the fire gone? No. But, but love is not just a, a fairy tale or, or a cartoon. Love is a, is a serious commitment. Love is, is a verb. It's not just a, a, a butterfly in, in the tummy feeling that, that comes and it goes and, um, it's not just defined by, by passion that, that, you know, just has these highs and lows and it's more like a, a roller coaster ride. And so what happens is that people actually panic when, when they have, you know, some sharp turns in their, in their marriage. They, they panic when there's some lows or when things just kind of seem boring. Or let me say it a different way. Stable. Stable's bad all of a sudden. It's boring. It's not exciting enough. As we seem to get older, we, you know, we, we have commitments. We, we've got to go to work. We've, we've got children to raise. We've got ministries that we're involved in. And more and more, we, we settle into these, these routines that allow us to accomplish a great deal of uh, many things every day. But, but somehow Hollywood and Disney, you know, they portray that as, as just boring and mundane. And that makes that a bad thing. And that makes that a negative thing. And it's not a negative thing. It's life. And if you can find somebody that you can share that life with for 50 years, what, what an amazing, beautiful thing. I have a, a really good friend right now who's, who's in his 70s and, and he lost his wife. And they had been together since they were 14. And he just lost his wife this year and his heart is broken. And that's, you know, about 60 years of being with somebody. And, you know, what did he do for a living? You know, he was in the heating and air conditioning business. You know, he wasn't James Bond. You know, he wasn't a prince. 
And they had this amazing, beautiful life together and raising their family and raising their grandchildren, seeing great grandchildren. And so we begin to, to then compare our marriages to these, these Disney movies. Do you know how often we're actually looking at these romantic love stories and either one, they're, they're high school students, which is completely insane to think about that. And, um, you know, and, you know, they break out into to songs every five seconds. You know, if you've ever seen High School Musical, right? And, you know, every time there's a problem, well, let's just sing. You know, if they're excited, well, let's just sing. If you want to talk about, you know, how I care and love for you, well, let me sing. And I'm beautiful and I have an amazing voice. And so, well, why wouldn't you fall in love with me? Or like I said, they're, we're watching these love stories and they're animals, you know, and yeah, my wife is more like Lady, and, and I'm more like the Tramp, and that was a pretty good description of us, too. But, you know, um, we don't like to eat our meals, you know, from the bowl in the back alley. You know, it's, it's a little bit different. Well, maybe I do, but not my wife. And so we're looking at, by definition, a, a story or a picture that, that that's not exactly going to match up to ours. And so it's... It's, it's fictitious from the start. And remember that the, the devil's going to come to us as an angel of light, as something beautiful, not, not as this grotesque, monstrous being. He's going to come to us in these soft, subtle touches, the, the soft sell of, of a cartoon and the romance of, of, you know, young love. And, and unfortunately what he loves more than anything is to see relationship broken, relationship broken between, between us and God, our, our own relationships. This is one of the reasons why God over and over and over again, when you see the, the deeds of, of the flesh and you see prohibitions against murder and, and adultery and, and stealing and lying and strife and arrogance, because those are relationship breakers, relationship crushers. God loves love. He loves relationship, but he loves it the right way. And we have to know what what true love really is. True love really isn't a Disney song. And so when we come back, we'll look at more of what Disney doesn't tell us. Since their small beginnings in 1963, the ministry of Rainier Christian Schools has been dedicated to educating and developing each of their students for the glory of God. And it's more than just a school. Rainier Christian Schools is actually an entire school district, with three schools serving the areas of Kent, Auburn, Covington, Renton, and Maple Valley. The Christ-centered environment weaves God's truth through everything they do, from top-notch academics all the way through their competitive sports programs. Learn more at RainierCSD.org or call 425-255-7273. That's 425-255-7273. Contact Rainier Christian Schools today. Welcome back. You're listening to Think Again Christian, sponsored by Rainier Christian Schools. And now your host, Tony Jamie. Today we're talking about what Disney doesn't tell us. Disney has a lot of amazing, fun, cute Movies that we've been watching for for years now. If you're like me, you've grown up on Disney. And some of your favorite movies and some of your favorite memories might be from a a Disney cartoon or movie. And so I'm not trying to kill or crush your, your, uh, you know, the Disney magic as it were. But but there are things that Disney doesn't tell us. And and, and let me be clear here. I'm, I'm not trying to attack Disney. Walt Disney never claimed to be... You know the marriage guru, or you know the the um, the biblical foundation for 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 a great marriage. He just wanted to produce entertainment and to make people laugh and to make people happy, and, and he's done that. But you know, we as believers, we we have a higher calling, and our calling begins with our purpose, and our purpose is to glorify and and honor the Lord and. 
one of the areas that, that we need to do that and that we have a great opportunity to do that. In fact, God himself uses it as a picture, as him being the the groom and we're the bride in, in marriage. And God is a, a romantic at heart. But there's a practical side to to this romance. It's not all just a, a big giant fairy tale. And, 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 and another thing, you know, there's been a lot of statistics that have been going around over the years that, you know, divorces, you know, 50% of the time that they, you know, or, or marriages 50% of the time end in divorce. And, and that's part of the, the, the cultural lie that wants us to believe that it doesn't really matter anyway. That essentially, well, ma- marriage isn't going to work and it's not good. And so, you know, just don't, don't think of it that way. Well, that's not really true. In fact, the New York Times is, you know, recently been doing some studies and since the 90s, which is about a 15 year span in looking at marriages that began in the 90s, we're at about 70% right now of marriages succeeding. And starting from 2000, the, the pace is getting even better. And so as we take a look back and try to analyze, well, what happened? Why was divorce going down so quickly? And, you know, there's a lot of conjecture and a lot of reasons why that may have happened. But the key to know and understand here is that marriage is a a staple of 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 society. And, and it is important and it is essential. And it is something that, that God uh, outlined himself throughout the scriptures. And so fortunately for Christians, we, we have more than Disney movies to explain what true love is like. I mean, imagine if all we had was Disney and, you know, after you broke out into your, your song and you got out of your, you know, your tights, now what? Well, first we have an incredibly detailed list of, of love attributes that, that we see in 1 Corinthians 13, what love is. And I love the way it, it, it states it. Love is. It's not a question. It's a statement. And God is letting us know this is exactly what love is. And, and love begins with, it's a verb. And it's a, you know, when you look at the Greek, it's a continuous verb. It's, it's not temporary. It's not just a, a, a passionate, temporary kind of love. It's not a, a love that's like, you know, you love a chocolate candy bar. This is a, a continuous action verb. And so that means there's an exhortation here. So when we talk about love, we're talking about making a commitment. Well, to what? Love is, is patient. When you love somebody, you are going to be patient with them. What does that mean? It's, it's in, in the King James and the Old Testament, you'll see it's God is, is long suffering. If you really love somebody, you will suffer for a long time or you'll be patient with them. And anybody who's been in marriage knows that, boy, as far as the, a key ingredient to, to a, a healthy, strong marriage is going to be, you're going to have to be patient because I don't care how beautiful she is. I don't care how strong he is. Um, we both bring our luggage and we, we throw it onto the bed when we get married and, and out spills all our sin and both sides have it. Love is, love is kind. And you say, well, of course love is kind. Well, in, in the fairy tale, we don't, we don't see anger. We don't see rage. We don't see impatience. We don't see sarcasm. We just see smiles and we're all on our best behavior. Love is, is not jealous. It's not jealous because it has full and complete trust in the other. And not just because we've only known each other for two hours or two days or two weeks, but because over a long period of time, that trust has been established and earned. Love doesn't brag and it's not arrogant. It's not cocky. It's not conceited. This is, this is how we're able to be humble with one another. Sometimes you've got to be the, the bigger person and be the first one to, to apologize. An arrogant person can't do that. I have to be right in my argument. I have to win. That doesn't get you very far. Love does not act unbecomingly. It's not rude. We've, we've lost that sense of, of, of being gentlemen and being ladies. Um, watch your, some of your old British 
you know, Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility and, you know, those those romance uh, Jane Austen type movies. And one of the things you'll see is just just how proper people are with each other. It doesn't seek its own. Love doesn't seek its own. See, one of the things that we see now in multimedia movies is really it's all about you. It's all about what you want. It's all about your selfish uh, desires. And if that person fills your cup, well, then that's the perfect person. That's not the kind of love that the Bible describes. The kind of love the Bible describes is you are the one that, that seeks them. You're the one that serves the other. Whereas Ephesians 5 talks about submitting to, to one another. Love is, is not provoked. It shouldn't be short-fused and easily angered. It shouldn't be provoked. It doesn't, doesn't take into account wrong suffered. It doesn't keep score, right? Okay, you did this, 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 and this to me. It's one of, one of the, the most difficult parts in marriage counseling. And you sit down and you ask people to, to lay out the situation and what's going on. And all of a sudden, they start 15 years ago. 15 years ago, he did this. 17 years ago, she started with this. And they have these lists, these lists that they've never forgiven each other for, that they've, they've never reconciled. They've, they've never restored the, 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 the argument. So they have these uh, accounts of wrongs suffered stored up. Love doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness. Instead, it rejoices with truth. It, it, it's, it's able to, to bear all, to carry all those burdens, to, to have the kind of belief in all, the, 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 the hope, the, the willingness to endure. So, so when we're in trial, when we're struggling, that, that you know, well, we, can, we can do this together. You know, I'll, I'll bear this burden with you. I believe in you. I have hope in you. We can make it. Why? Love never fails. It never fails. Divorce is not an option. It's not an option. When we begin that way, we have a better chance of ending that way. Well, like I said, these are all continuous verbs that override the emotional, you know, goosebumps and, and the early attraction and the personal passions. And more importantly, these are the actions that produce long lasting relationships that, that endure the highs and the lows. They, um, they endure wrinkles. They, they endure weight gain. They, they endure struggle. They endure the, the lows that occur in real life, not in cartoon land, not in fantasy land, but in real life, there will be trials. That's just a fact. Ephesians 5 uh, goes on to give us some more just uh, deeper details. And I mentioned earlier about being subject to one another's and, and husbands having the responsibility of sanctifying, nourishing and cherishing his wife beyond the emotional or even the commitment, but, but a spiritual bond that we have for one another. The idea that we're, we're stewards, that God actually put us together thinking, you know what? These two people, these two people can help each other, can help each other spiritually. It's one of the most difficult things we find, you know, dealing with children at school is, is that they've been raised on these, these cartoons and they've been raised on Disney and they're, they're filled with Hannah Montana and, you know, your problems are all solved in two minutes and whatever you do, uh, as long as you're cute and funny is okay. It's not okay. It hurts. Sin stings. It scars. And so it's important that we, we don't just go after the, 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 prettiest girl in school or the high school quarterback. There's depth to character that we're looking for and that depth that we see in, you know, in, in, in first uh, Corinthians 13, the, the list of love. When was the last time you, you talked to a young person and asked them what, what they want when they grow up? One of the sad things to me is very rarely will they say, I, I want to be married. Even though if you ask a follow-up question, they'll say that. But, but really, they, they, they kind of think that it's just going to happen like the, the Disney magic. It's just going to come out of nowhere. They don't have to plan it. They don't have to think about it. And they're going to be swept on their feet. 
And what Disney doesn't tell them is, this isn't normal. It's not the way it normally happens. What Disney doesn't tell you is that the Christ-centered life with family and friends, that's the beautiful tale, not a fairy tale. So before you passively brainwash yourselves or, or your children, remember what Disney doesn't tell us. And think again, Christian. You've been listening to Think Again, Christian, sponsored by Rainier Christian Schools and Tony Jamie. Rainier Christian Schools serves preschool through high school with three locations in the Renton, Maple Valley, Covington, Kent, and Auburn areas. For more information about Rainier Christian Schools, www.rainiercsd.org or call 425-255-7273.